All right. Hey, everyone. Carmen here, digital editor at Ms. back again from the National Sexual Assault Conference Exhibition Hall, where it is freezing. Um, I am with Lisa, the Outreach Director slash Recruitment Specialist at the Translatina Coalition. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm happy and joy to be here today with you. Um, and yes, um, pretty much um, it's a beautiful day. Um, there's been an amazing performance earlier. Um, and I just want to thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to like have a conversation with you and let the people know who we are as an organization, nonprofit located in Los Angeles, California, on down on Koreatown. Um, unique for being the first led trans organization for the trans community and non-binary. Um, I'm happy to say that um, we have a dropping center, multi-purpose dropping center where you can um, just come and be yourself. It's a safe, secure zone where you can be at. We have from um, clothing, shoes, hygiene kits, makeup kits, um, a television, DVD, books, a computer where you can make copies, facts, and scans. We also have um, a group of dedicated volunteers that cook daily meals. And when I'm talking about daily meals, I don't mean like a hot sandwich or a sandwich. I'm talking about like homemade meals. <laughs> and by that, I I'm talking about like, um, like carne asada, burritos, mole, even pozole sometimes Ooh. with chips, salsa, popcorn. We have waters with Gia. We want to embrace a healthy type of eating too. So we do waters with Gia, pineapple, watermelon. And that's what people love about us. And we get up to 25 to sometimes 30 trans and non-binary people coming eating daily at our dropping center. We also have life skills once a month. We have... Um, um, Euro classes every Tuesday from seven to nine, and it's in um, Euro classes for those that don't know. It's South Defense classes, and um, those South Defense classes are done by an international black belt trans woman that comes and gives them. So we're really glad and privileged to have an uh, international, worldwide Euro instructor coming to give us yeah. those classes, and most of all, her being trans. We also have uh, uh, different programs. One of our um, programs that that we had that we, the organization started with was the um, SPOON program, which is for trans and non-binary individuals that come out of jail, prison, immigration detentions, um, and then need um, support with paying re rental assistance, transportation, food, and clothing. We will help them out with that. We also um, have for the ones that are locked up, incarcerated in immigration detentions, jail, and prisons. We'll put money on their books. We'll send letters of encouragement and hope for them. And we also, sometimes when we do outreach, at the moment we're not doing it because we have tons of, of letters right now, but we put um, paper and pens and even crayons so people can send them also letters of encouragement and hope, you know? And um, we also have um, this other program that um, is called the Victim Violence Survivor, Sur I'm sorry, I'm so, sorry. I'm so nervous. The Victim Surviving um, Services, which is, um, this is the newest program that we have, and it's for anybody that's been a victim of a crime that need um, any assistance with transportation, food, clothing. Um, if they need us to go to court with them, if they need us to like make a police report with them, and pretty soon we're going to be having lawyers for that, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the most awesome part of this is that they don't get to go with an officer or police officer to make a police report or, or to like go to court. They get to go with another um, advocate trans women that they can feel more support and understood, you know, and I think that's really important for our community. We also have um, uh, Miche, which is our um, policy um, strategist, um, and she does all type of political and things that have to do with passing laws and, and going to talk to senators and Republicans and just doing the hard work for the trans and non-binary community. Awesome. We also have um, um, what else? Let me see. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so yeah, we uh, have our fashion show called Garras coming pretty soon on November. We do it in downtown LA for all those that would like to come and support us. It's a fashion show that we do in downtown LA. Um, we're at the Tree Hotel. If you would like to know a little bit more, go to our website, 
please donate. Um, right now, we also ha um, give out clothing at our dropping center, we're running low. So for all those that would like to like come and bring um, clothes that is usable or any shoes, we'll be gladly to take them. Um, we're located on 3055 Wilshire on Koreatown. Uh, we're open from Monday to Friday from 9 to 6, and the drop-in center is open from 9 to 5. Okay. And, um, yeah, we're having our fashion show. You, that's a, a great way to follow us. You can also follow us on media, on Instagram, the Final Coalition, or on Facebook. Um, and, yeah, come and visit us. Even if you're not trans or not binary, you can still come and visit us. We invite everybody, all the public, to come and visit us because we never know when we have a friend of a friend or a cousin or brother or sister that might identify as a trans or non binary that might need of the services. You can actually go and be like, you know what? I went to this place. I see what community is. It's an amazing place to be at where you can be um, safe and secure. We have a lot of our clients that are. are struggling with homelessness that go every day just to chill watch tv use the computer just be themselves you know so um please support us please donate if you can to our website you know translatinalcoalition.org and i mean dot com <laughs> thank you very much for having me here awesome yeah and um well i know i'm i'm definitely dropping in for lunch um gotta stop by um but yeah and i'm I think the work that, you know, the coalition does is so, it is super unique. It's also so important. And, um, you know, the sort of tagline I noticed of the organization is the voice of trans Latinas. And I was wondering, what does that mean for you all right now in the midst of like the Me Too movement? Um, like how have you been sort of working to also, you know, empower survivors to speak up and reclaim their narratives and sort of, you know, like bringing that back and using, you know, your work as a launch pad for sharing the stories of, you know, trans and non-binary survivors right now? Well, um, the way we're doing that, um, at the beginning, a lot of people have first have the misconception because it says trans Latino, that is just services for trans Latino or Latina. And that's a misconception, I want to say. Um, the services um, are for any race or any culture, as long as you identify yourself as trans or non-binary. And I'll let you guys know the story. Why was it called trans Latina? It was because when the organization started, a group of trans women got together to advocate that were Latinas that did advocate for all the trans and non-binary people that reside in the United States. And that's why the name stood as Trans Latina, because it started with a group of trans that were Latinas that got together from different parts of the state. And um, the way that we're doing that, uh, uh, letting um, victims' stories being heard, is actually something a project that Michelle is working on at this moment as her doing our, our policy and, and advocate um, a strategist. Um, she's getting a group of people. So if, if anybody's interested in saying their story, please get in contact with Michelle Pulido at Translatina Coalition. She's our policy strategist and we'll be more than happy to share your story. Awesome. And, um, and you all are also co-sponsoring a track at the conference this year, the LGBTQ track. Um, so sort of centering around topics that have to do with queer and trans folks and survivors. Um, what conversations are happening in that track this week and sort of what are you hoping that the advocates attending those sessions will take home from this conference to do to do better and more inclusive work that includes trans and non-binary survivors? Well, yesterday, uh, me and Michelle Pulido um, had a, a training. Um, we were doing one-on-one -on -one training non-binary, and I was happy to see people from the military there, um, people from different organizations around the states in the world, most likely being in bar and wanting to know how to deal with clients that might classify themselves as um, non-binary or trans. And that's already a big beginning of it because then they can go and spread this information with their coworkers and other places and have a better way of understanding the millennials, you know, and and, and, and the non-binary spectrum and um, non-conforming and trans, you know, that um, it's already in the work. Uh, if you look back two or three years ago, um, Non-binary was something that was not even heard about, you know, and now we're 
pushing it forward. We're, we're letting people know that we're here. That is a fact, you know, and um, I think we're heading towards the right direction. Awesome. And um, what do you think that activists tackling issues of violence, um, you know, whether they're support organizations or advocacy folks who are lobbying and um, fighting for legislation or even activists on campuses, how can folks in this space, um, in the nonviolence space, sort of do right by uh trans folks like how can they make sure that the work they're doing is inclusive and you know welcoming just making yourself visible occupying spaces letting people know that we're here and that we're not going to go nowhere and educate yourself to the highest level so like that people don't just think that oh it's just like something that or you just want to like act that way or be that way because it's something that you're going to grow out of it no we're not, it's not something that you're going to grow out of it. That's who we are. And this is who we are. We're going to stay this way. And if by educating ourselves to the highest level, we can go to positions where we can make big changes. Awesome. And, um, and y'all are also really focused on fostering trans leadership. Um, and I was wondering if there was anyone you could point folks to um that you think is doing a really great job right now in in the space of ending and preventing violence who's doing really inclusive work really amazing work or maybe are trans and non-binary binary folks themselves who are leading that work um like is there anything that stands out to you well i feel privileged and honor <sighs> And I'm not just saying this because she's my CEO, but who else than the Bambi Salcedo, chingona, you know? And um, it's amazing to have such a mentor um, to come to work and see this person. Like, she's like my role model, like uh, an amazing person to work with side by side, you know? Um, at this moment, that's like the, the I know that there's a lot more out, out there and i'm sorry at the, yeah. but um i'm like don't apologize <laughs> <laughs> but i uh, honestly like I, i'm i'm new to all this honestly like i come from a background where i don't used to really be into community mm. so um you know now that that i remember even when i was not in community i always used to hear the word bambi 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 and you know what, for a lot of years, um, I thought it was a Bambi that I knew that was another Bambi, you know, but, <laughs> but, but it wasn't, it was this Bambi, you know, and um, I'm just so honored and so privileged to work with some, such an amazing person. And I know there's a lot of people out there in my respects because we all together are doing an amazing job, you know, and, but honestly, at this moment, that's the person that in my heart and in my vision, I, I feel that is doing an amazing job, just like everybody else does too. Yeah. Like that is amazing. Everyone, everyone should feel that way about the people they work for. It makes it much more fun. Um, and well, and you said that you didn't, you weren't always in this sort of space. Um, what, what led you to where you are right now with the coalition? The fact that um, I went through a lot of, you know, as a lot of trans girls gone through, you know, I'm um, talking about from being discriminated, um, uh, especially by the law. I used to live a, a crazy life where like I done things that I'm not proud of right now. Well, well back then and um, it's the, um, you know, a lot of discrimination from the cops, a lot of misunderstanding from people, you know, there was other organizations that you could have go to, but you know, even them at that time, time they didn't have that much resources you know so when i seen this organization doing all these direct services and like just doing rallies going to march um doing all these things that are like just making us visible like it touched my heart and honestly um i started as a volunteer at trans latino coalition and um it just took over me to the point where I was just like, this is what I want to do. You know, this is where my heart is. And I want to see what can I do to be involved in my community. And especially for the young generation, you know, that need it a lot. And um, 
even though that sometimes I feel like they're gonna teach us, <laughs> but but um, yeah, um, I I feel that um, coming from a place where I, there was no type of resources for trans or non-binary people to now being them is like what made me want to be part of it because I feel that looking towards the future, we're gonna even be bigger than where we, we already are. Awesome. That's so beautiful. And, um, and you know, the question that I've been asking everyone today, my closing question for everyone has been that the theme of the conference is bold moves. And so I think we are going to, you know, everything's going to get bigger and better. Um, despite the current climate out there, I do, I do think there's a lot of reason for optimism. And so what are your next bold moves? Like, what is the coalition going to be doing? What are you going to be doing um, that you're really excited about to do sort of after this conference to keep making change? Well, um, we have a couple little bit of surprises <laughs> under the rug that I don't know oh, I should talk so about, sweet. but it's amazing stuff. So, uh, one of them, like I said earlier, is our Gara show on November. Um, um, oh, we're also, um, hoping and planning to see hopefully if we can like, hopefully open a transitioning housing, awesome. which is so needed in the community. We still don't know how that's going to look. We're in the plannings and, um, hopefully, uh, we can get a lot of support because you need, you know, you, we are a nonprofit organization, so we need the support of the public so we can make this happen. And we know that it's much needed for, for trans and non-binary individuals to, to have housing because you they can't go to a regular place where they have, like, a, a place where people go when they're homeless, a shelter. Like, we get discriminated, we get misgendered constantly, and then those areas where they are at are not safe for us. Like, we are... Um, are in high risk of getting beat up, getting discriminated, being called, shout things, you know? So having a transitioning housing that focuses on pure trans and non-binary will be amazing. So yes. Awesome. Well, that is a bold move and everyone should totally support the coalition. Um, the Facebook page is tagged in the description of this video. So you can find all their links and goodness um, on their Facebook page. And yeah, thank you so much for being Love here that. with me today and for being at the conference. And, you know, I'm super excited to stay connected thank with you and the work you're doing. Oh my God. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Thank you.